Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, broadcaster and NWSL analyst for CBS Sports. On today's episode, we have a special interview ahead of the NWSL Championship Final. A quick reminder to subscribe to us on YouTube to never miss out whenever we go live for our NWSL Championship preview and live recap. Today, we welcome a rookie for Kansas City current defender, midfielder, forward. She plays it all. NWSL championship bound, Alex Loera. Welcome to Attacking Third. Thank you so much for having me. We're hyped to have you. Listen, it's your first time on the show. We always get so excited when we get someone on for the first time. And especially uh, the occasion, uh, the the moment that is being uh, commemorated. The, the Kansas City current are headed to the NWSL championship final. Let's just start there. How are you feeling as a team is big game? Yeah, it's crazy because we, we got to this point and we are so ecstatic. We have, we've taken each game game by game. So Houston and then rain. Um, but we are so excited. Um, it's obviously history. We're making history for our club. Um, so that is, that's something super special to all of us, but just team morale. Everyone is on a high. We're just trying to enjoy it, um, enjoy the little things that come with it. And so it's it's been a crazy, crazy journey, um, but we're we're so excited for where we're at. It is very exciting to watch this Kansas City team this year. I mean, even throughout the regular season into the playoffs, it's just been electric and really fun to watch. And you've no, gotten recognized by a lot of different people, um, not just in the soccer world, but all over the place. But as a former Santa Clara, you have to know that you're getting some big shout outs from other former players, Allie Wagner, Brandy Chastain, they're tweeting at you. We talk to Allie a lot because she's an analyst for CBS and she is always tooting your horn. How does it feel to be recognized by some of the greatest that have ever played this game? Yeah, it's obviously super humbling. I am so blessed to have them um, talk so highly of me. I know I love Allie and Brandy and Leslie Osborne and every Santa Clara alum. Um, I was actually just talking to, to Hugh Williams about it. And he was saying that like you Santa Clara people really stick together. And I'm like, yeah, we have to, like we, we've got each other. And, and so I think it's, it's definitely, um, super special when I hear them, um, talk about me and give me some praise. And so I, I'm thankful and I, and I love both of them very dearly. So, um, it's, yeah, it's super incredible. Yeah, you gotta you look, we always gotta we always gotta rep for the Santa Clara Broncos whenever yeah. we can. There's a lot of Broncos all across NWSL. So uh not too shocking mm-hmm. to continue to see the legacy being established with, with someone like yourself with Kansas City. You've had quite the season so far with the current. And uh, you know, what were some of your personal goals that you hope to achieve when you were drafted to the current? You know, have you checked any of them off since then? Yeah, I honestly, when I was drafted, I just wanted to come in and help in any way that I could. Um, Obviously, I wanted to have a positive impact on the club. And so um, I've been super, super blessed and thankful for for every minute I've gotten to play um, because it's not always like that. And so it's been super, super great. Um, And I just feel so thankful to the club. I just knowing that the coaches have confidence in me and trust and the other players have trust and confidence in me just helps me um, to be able to, to play the way I am. And I think I obviously wanted to score in my first year because I don't get to score often. And so um, I got my first goal in challenge cup against Chicago and my family was actually at that game. So that was super special to me. I, it was incredible. I just came on in the second half and, I don't know what happened. I just was like, I'm going to shoot it. And so I just shot it. And then it was just hearing my family. Cause you always know their voices and you can hear them. And so just hearing them cheer. And then this past weekend too, my family was able to make the game and then I scored again. And so that was, that's definitely something that I wanted to, to try to contribute in this, this season and, you know, help with some assists here and there. And so I think there's, there's definitely been some some statistical things that I wanted to check off that I was able to do. But um, I think even just growing relationships with the, with the different players and 
and the coaching staff was just something I really wanted to establish in this first year and, and ownership. Um, so I, I definitely have been super thankful that that's all happened this year. You've definitely checked off a lot. I mean, as you mentioned, scoring yeah. that goal in challenge cup, when you look back to that first goal, uh, did you expect to keep that going? Like, did that almost like crack open the door a little bit of like, coach, put me higher up the field. Let, let me continue to get more goals. Yeah. I think just even having that feeling after that, after I scored was like, let me play forward. But I'm like, I'm not forward. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> that was just me wanting to experience the feeling of scoring again. But honestly, I, I will play wherever he wants me to play. I'll play wherever anyone wants me to play as long as I can, you know, get on the field and help contribute to anything. So, um, as much as I would like to keep scoring and, and being the one to do that, I, I'm just so happy that my teammates are having such great years scoring and, um, the celebrations, watching them light up and celebrate. It's been, it's been super great. Alex, I'm a former defender, so I understand any opportunity to score yeah. or to play higher up the field, you like jump at it. And then mm -hmm. sometimes when you're in the middle of it, you're like, okay, wait, like I just, I, just, I know I just need to play defense. I'm yes. just going to track back. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned Hugh Williams. He's still involved with the club. He was the coach last year and now um, involved in the front office and still very involved. But there was a bit of a, a revamping in the coaching staff, adding on Matt Potter, Ella mm -hmm. Massar, Lucas Rodriguez. So how has been working with the KC staff this year helped you develop personally? Yeah, I just, I was able to talk with Matt before I got here. And so we kind of just established a relationship before I got here um, with the national camps and stuff. So that's been super great to just kind of have him in my corner and just know that he has full confidence in me, full trust. Um, so I think that has really helped our relationship because it just the confidence that you get from knowing that your coach trusts you. And even when you make a mistake, um, knowing that they still have your back and, and the other coaching staff, they are fantastic. Ella, Lucas, and Lloyd, they are wonderful people. They, they know the game. Well, they're so smart, but also they're, they're just a bunch of kids at heart that love soccer. Like we will be getting our cleats on and we look out and they're playing some game on the field when they're setting up. And so it's just, knowing that they also love the sport and still play the sport whenever they can. I think that's been super helpful. And in, in all of our relationships, we all try to like walk past them, not make each other. Like it's something so silly and so kid like, but it's just <laughs> that energy that they bring to, to the practices and the games and just everything that they do for this club. It's been so easy to create that relationship with them. I love that. Look, there's nothing, there's nothing better than sort of having that kind of like free and loose energy going into a really uh, big, big game on the horizon for you all. But we've, we've touched on it a little bit, cracked a couple of jokes already about how you played everywhere. It seems yeah. for the this year. So as someone who's had a lot of different perspectives in game on the pitch for this team, whether it's been higher up on the pitch or, or lower um, let's talk about the teammates. Which of your teammates uh, along the different lines has been particularly helpful in, in getting you acclimated to, to league play this year? Yeah, the first one that stands out for me is Desi Scott. She is just an incredible human. She, I am so lucky to have someone like her on my team, and I wish everyone could experience having Desi on your team. Um, she just puts full confidence in you. She she works so hard for everybody. If you lose the ball, she's busting herself to get back, to get that ball. And so not even just on the field, but off the field, she makes sure you know that you're comfortable in this environment. And, and if there's anything that you want to speak up about, like she is right behind you. Um, she's our biggest hype man. She, she's just everything that encompasses a leader and just an overall great human. And so she has definitely made this transition from college and especially not knowing anybody on this team coming into this year. I think she, yeah, I, I couldn't say enough, enough about Desi Scott. I, I, you just have to know her and to be on her team to know that she is definitely the heart and soul of our team. And she makes, she makes this team go around. And so she was definitely somebody who, who really helped me. And then also Taylor Leach, she, I just remember in preseason, she was, I always got to be behind her and like the passing patterns or next to her when we were scrimmaging or something and her leadership, her, her vocal leadership, just 
every chance that she gets to help you, she, she takes it and she may not get the reward, but she loves seeing people succeed because she's contributed to that person's success. And so during preseason, she was always in my corner, like, Hey, if you, if you take your touch a little bit more this way, like it might help you a little bit. And so I think she is just somebody who has put so much confidence in me. And I know that at halftime, if I'm struggling, I can go to her and be like, Hey, like, what's like, what am I doing? What do I need? Do you see anything? And I know that she is always there. Um, so she's also been somebody who, who I've been looking up to this whole time. I mean, I love to hear you talk about uh, mm -hmm. your teammates and, and kind of that's been the vibe all year around Kansas city is that it is such a family and, and a sisterhood. Uh, Looking back at the last two games for Kansas City throughout the playoffs, the quarterfinal and then the semifinal, um, Desi Scott was serving her mm -hmm. suspension during the quarterfinal. So she was not available that game. And then the last match, the semifinal against OL Reigns, she was available. Uh, you have played right alongside her in the midfield in that semifinal match. What was the difference in those games, having Desi and then not having her for this, the first match? Yeah, I Desi just, she vocally contributes so much she knows the game so well that you don't see a run coming and she sees it two steps ahead and so she's got it covered and and just if you miss a tackle like I said she's got the the nickname the destroyer um and she will just lay her body on the line for you and I think that obviously we all have that for each other but when she's on the field, you know that you can maybe make a more risky decision because she has your back. And so I think just, I think we are just a different team when she is on and off the field. She just brings so much to our team that it's like, you can't miss her when you're watching. Oh, you can't miss her. It's so fun mm -hmm. to watch her play for sure. Um, you touched on this a little, Alex, and that, that you play defense, you play midfield, you might want to play some striker at times. What are the conversations uh, between you and, and Matt Potter, head coach of The Current, about playing those various roles, and especially when you do get shifted higher up the field and then shifted back? What, what are those conversations like? Yeah, I think he definitely reminds me that I still have to do my defensive duties when I am up higher on the field because I'm all about, let me score. Just let me, I think I could just go through everybody because I'm like, I just want to score. But then, like you said earlier, when you get in those positions and you're just like, oh, I'm not as creative as I want to be, or, <laughs> oh my gosh, what do I do now? Like you just really, I have grown to appreciate what our forwards do and just their creativity and everything. I'm like, how do you think of that? And so I like, well, jokingly, if we're doing like a passing pattern, like usually we'll split like defense and attacking so that they can get more into the attack, more on goal. And, and I'm more on the defensive side, which is still fun, but not as much fun as scoring. And so I'm always like, Matt, can I go on the, can I go on the other group? I, I probably like the little Matt in his ear, like, Matt, can I go, can I go today? Am, am I in the attacking group today? And so I think it's just, it's a very playful banter. Like just, he knows that I, I just love to score, even though like, I'm like, maybe not the most creative person. So it's just, it's just a super fun kind of relationship with him. And, and so when I do get to, that's, what's also nice about having Desi side by side is because I kind of have a little bit more free reign and I can get up and down, but yeah, it's, I just have this, this scoring addiction that I'm like, I just want to feel it again. And so it's like, but you're not that good up there. So it's like, you got to figure out what's good for you. And so it, yeah, it's just a really fun environment with him. You play oh. alongside Desi, you know, like, okay, I can go forward and she'll, she'll cover me. Like I can yes. just run and, and yeah. get her goal. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's feeling me though, hearing you sort of like you check yourself you're like, wait a minute though. I'm yeah. not the most <laughs> But look, it's just year one for you. Who knows? Maybe yeah. when we chat with you in the future, that'll be one of those different personal goals for you. And we'll talk about you're it. Right. But uh, in terms of looking ahead in the near future to this NWSL championship, uh, let's talk about Kansas City's journey to the playoffs. So the team is officially one step closer to a little bit of a like worst to first storyline here. I know you've all been hearing it all season long. The team picked up the two big wins, quarterfinal victory over Houston, the semifinal win against O.L. Reign. What's it been like uh, preparing for so many elimination games, but not just big games, big games on the road? Yeah, that is, that's a huge point. I think each team brings 
different challenges than the other. So it's just taking each game day by day um, and just kind of learning their tendencies, learning their strengths and maybe what we can exploit to help us. And so it's been, it's obviously not easy to go on the road and get a win, but um, I think what helped us is looking back at our season, we did go on a 13 game unbeaten streak and many of those were on the road. So we knew kind of, we've been in this environment. We know what we can and can't do. Like, like we know we have it, we have the mm -hmm. tools that we need. And so I think just being able to have that experience and, and just kind of that confidence in ourselves to look back at that unbeaten streak and know that we did that on the road too and not just at home is like we that's our reason to believe like we have the experience so let's just go and put it in to these games and so I think that's exactly what we did and we we were able to come out successful the belief that this team has is so strong but now as you you look ahead the NWSL championship you know you'll be facing Portland Thorns a team that has had a lot of success as a club. Um, as you prepare for this championship and this week in training, um, what are the differences versus the other postseason games? And then especially from the regular season? Yeah, I I think just one of the, the big ones is this is a huge game. Like this is, it's each game has been huge, but like this is all the marbles. Like this is what we've been working for. And so just kind of, preparing for Houston we're we're extra focused I mean not Houston um Portland we're extra focused for this for this game and when we go into film we're extra focused it's more detailed um and just knowing that we're gonna have we're gonna it's gonna be long hours in film and and training and stuff just knowing that you maybe need to go watch film on your own and so it's just there's the little things the preparation leading up to this to this weekend is it's just amplified from what we've been doing. But I do think that our coaching staff does such a great job of preparing us through the week that when we get to that point, it's like no more thinking. Like you have you have everything you need. We've prepared you. You've prepared yourself. You've played them before. Just have the confidence and go out there and, and do what you love. And so I think that's been something that's been really important is just extra focus now so that when we get to the game, there's no new learning, no new thinking. We can just go out and be ourselves. So I think that's something that we're trying to keep in mind. I love that. I think that's a great perspective to have ahead of such a big game. The, the, we've been chatting about like goal scoring and showing love to, uh, you know, scoring in front of net. But, you know, the, the team had a really big defensive performance in the semifinal, mm -hmm. getting the shutout, 37 clearances. The, the stats were outrageous how how has the communication been uh between the defense during the postseason and, and how is you know playing with someone like Adriana French sort of helped in in your development this year yeah I again can't applaud our defense like you said enough for their performance this past game especially AD um pulling out saves that I'm like how in the world did you just save that um but that's her. She is just incredible. And, and she demands excellence from every single one of us. And, and sometimes it can come off a bit harsh in the moment, but you know that she has your best interest and that we all have this, this same goal in mind to keep the ball out of our net. And so mm -hmm. she, just to have her to look up to and, and just her communication ability, her leadership, she is just she's incredible. And, and I'm just like, I am so lucky to have you behind me. Like everyone should be afraid to go against her because she is, she's just so I'm going to throw my body here. And if I hit the poles, at least I saved the ball. And so she's just, mm -hmm. she's incredible. She, her leadership on and off the field, she demands excellence from everybody. And and including herself, if she, if she makes a mistake, she's the first one to raise her hand and be like, look, that's on me. And so I think just, there's so much good that she does that you can't help, but look at her and be like, wow, she's inspiring. And so I think it's been, it's been so helpful for me just because I know that even if I mess up, she has my back, but also she's going to hold me accountable, which helps me yeah. hold myself accountable. And so I think she just, she just makes everyone around her better. And, and we're very lucky to have her on this team for sure. 
AD French is a big reason that that your team is headed to the championship. And now that you have punched your ticket to the NWSL championship in Washington, D.C., you touched on it a little bit. Your family was at the game when you scored that first goal Mm -hmm. in Challenge Cup. They've been to a couple. Now that you know you're going to D.C., who are you expecting to have in the stands? Like what, what members of your family are like, hey, Alex, we're coming. We need tickets. Yeah, my mom and my grandma are some of my biggest supporters try to make every single game that they can my dad tries to make every game that he can and even my siblings I have an older sister a younger brother and a younger sister um and they're like I'm calling into work sick like I like I'm sorry I gotta go like this is so huge that it's just like everyone is trying to be there my grandparents on my dad's side they're coming my aunts on my dad's side and my aunt uncle on my mom's side it's just everyone is like this is like a once in a lifetime, maybe thing in your career. Like not everyone makes it to the championship in their career. And so they're like, we want to be there for you. Like, can you get us tickets? Like, what's the deal? And so it's been really fun to like, kind of have people reach out and be like, Hey, we're coming. Like even just throughout the whole year playing and playing in this league, I've had people, random people that I was like, Oh, like, so nice to hear from you reach out and they're like hey we're coming to the game we're in town like we would love to talk to you after and so it's just it's fun how it can bring so many people together like this sport just brings so many people together not even just like our family members but like just everybody friends family and just to just come watch us play it's just incredible and so that's what's super special about our program too is like they have made it a point that they want our family members to be able to come out. So they have done everything that they can to, to fly out our family members and like, just make it so special for us. And so it's just to have my mom, my grandma, everybody in the stands, it's, and to hear them because you know, their voice. So you're like, I can hear my mom for sure. And so I'm like, she's in the stands. And so it's just, it just makes every moment more special. I love that. I love that for, for you and all the players who are heading to this big, big game. We're we're closing it out here with, with the more uh, fun question. So let's have one last one. We got to stay on brand here, though, Alex, because when okay. talking to your teammates, we've all asked them a pretty similar question. So we're going to ask you uh, similar as well. Look, Kansas City has been in the highlight reels for a number of things, but one of those big things are the goal celebrations that have been coming mm. from this team. What has been uh, your favorite Kansas City goal celebration to date? Oh, my goodness. They're all so good. Like, I am trying to think of all of them, and they're just so good. I think my favorite was Claire's because nobody had any idea. Like, we had asked her before the game, like, if you score, what's your celebration? And she was like, oh, we don't do that in France. Like, I don't know. And then all of a sudden she just pulls this out of rowing the boat. And it just was so perfect because it's like, she's rowing down the current. And so it was just like everything tied together. So you can like see us all looking around and then we see her rowing the boat. And then at once, all of us are like, we're in. And we're rowing the boat together. And I think that was probably my favorite thing because she is such a special person and player. And so when she was like, you know what? I'm going to celebrate me too. And so we all just celebrated with her. But like I said, every single one has been super, super fun to be a part of. Um, especially all of Lowe's are, I don't know how she thinks of it. I know. I'm just like, where did this come from? But it's definitely, I think it's just something that has inspired people across the league because then we saw the wave or the San Diego do the wave. Like they were surfing the wave, which was super cool. So I think it's just important because we need to celebrate how hard it is to score a goal. And so to see all these different celebrations, it's like, yes, like be proud of yourself because we're proud of you too. And so it's been super fun to be a part of. I love that. I don't, I don't know if we've gotten uh La Vosier's roll the boat, Sully. Uh, on yeah. I love that you brought that up. And I love that she kind of played y'all a little bit. Like that's right? a very <laughs> little component and antidote that you share with the listener, the listeners here. So, so thank you for that. This has been a, a real delight. Um, thank you, Alex, for, for joining us on Attacking Third. We always like to give a shout out to the listeners. So thanks to our audience for, for listening and joining along with the interview. Uh, congratulations to the Kansas City Current on this fantastic run in the NWSL playoffs. Good luck on Saturday. Reminder to everyone that you can catch Alex Loera and the Kansas City Current against Portland Thorns FC in the NWSL Championship. 
on Saturday, October 29th on prime time on CBS. We will be back with more championship coverage this week for Sandra Herrera and Lisa Roman and Alex Loera. This was Attacking Third.